Kelly. This is the same thing that happened to us when we were there. And uh, Kelly can recount it well. The way the AP reported our story was uh, abominable, just uh, completely biased. What I noticed, Mrs. Paul, on that to your husband's point was how the protesters with divergent views, those pro-Trump let the count go on, those protesting what they were talking about, were actually mingling with one another. They were in the same space. That was exactly what you had encountered uh, with a lot more of the protesters, you know, opposed to Donald Trump, opposed to Republicans and conservatives. So it's happened again. Yes, I think what's important to realize, and there are a multitude of videos on the internet of this happening, just to innocent, ordinary people. These folks are not agitating. After you know, after the rally, they were in restaurants, they were walking back to their hotels, and they were being mobbed and assaulted by crowds of Antifa and Black Lives Matter, shouting horrible things at them, the same thing that they were doing to us. And again, these aren't folks that were trying to agitate or do anything. They were trying to get back to their hotels. Uh, what caused me to tweet out at the AP was the scene of that young girl and her parents. Her big brother had his arm around her. She's like 10 or 11 years old. She's in tears and she's being screamed at horrible stuff by grown men with megaphones. And the whole family looked absolutely terrorized. And I know exactly what that felt like. And it just, it broke my heart looking at that. And then I saw people sitting in restaurants and a Black Lives Matter supporter threw a commercial grade firecracker at them. I mean, what's it going to take for the mainstream media to really report on this? Is somebody uh -huh. horribly burned or assaulted? Um, it's it's just outrageous. These these thugs are just roaming the streets and just accosting people who are doing nothing more than trying to get back to their hotels. This seemed to accelerate as soon as it turned to night, I guess. And, uh, uh, Senator, one of the things we learned, the uh, Department of Homeland Security had warned of uh, violence on both sides and concerns that uh, earlier on, this is before this latest dust up this past weekend, that white supremacists were the most persistent threat to our homeland. But that's not so. It's not just white supremacists. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are these mm -hmm. and other groups mm -hmm. that are anarchy in mind. So if, if there's such a thing as... Spreading Go, the Senator. Enough to spread around. Well, here's the thing. If you read the Associated Press story from last night, you can't tell who the people are that are arrested. Everybody arrested were the people attacking the Trump supporters. There was a mother with her child in a stroller being attacked. These were the anti-Trump people creating the violence entirely. And yet you read AP and it doesn't even describe who these people are. They say the Trump demonstrations led to violence. Do you know when the mob attacked us and they nearly toppled a policeman and I helped to stabilize him? The AP reported that, oh, the policeman was jostled. That's not the truth. Whatever happened to the Associated Press, which was supposed to be an objective beacon of truth. So we complain that there's right and left in our country, but what if the center, what if those who say they are objective are no longer objective? Where will people find their news? Ha <laughs> ha! You know, Mrs. Paul, one of the things I did notice, and we touched on in the beginning with your husband as well, this notion that the, 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 the protesters of extreme views can be in the same place at the same time. There's got to be a way to avoid that. Passions run deep, they turn violent. Um, there's got to be a way of separating crowds when this sort of happens because it's happened enough here. And, and uh, I think it's fair to say, in looking at this, that those who were marching Neil, on behalf of Donald screw Trump, you. the count go on. We're, we're being very, very well behaved, and then those, of course, when it turned nightfall, much as we've seen in other incidents, erupted into violence, but that they were seen together, much as when you guys came out of the White House at the time of the RNC convention, when the president wrapped up his remarks, they had sort of intermingled and were on top of each other. Unfortunately for you, um, the, the guys who didn't share your views were the overwhelming majority. There's got to be a better way to handle this. What do you think? Ah. Well, I think one of the things when you, you look at the, go ahead, go ahead, Kelly. Well, I think that, that one of the big problems, and I put this on, you know, Mayor Bowser in D.C., I left D.C., and what happened to us and what is happening to that city is that they are actually blocking off streets. And these folks that were attacked, Neil, you know, going to their hotels were just like us. They weren't actively demonstrating or doing anything. They were just trying to get home, to get to their cars, to sit in restaurants. And these groups are now coming after anybody that they perceive is a 
Trump, Trump supporter. And it, it, bo it bothers me so much that Antifa, which is a group that professes to be anti-fascism, but basically they want to terrorize, bully, intimidate, and shout down anyone who disagrees with them. And that is the definition and the essence of fascism itself. And they don't care if, if as I said, you're a, a young family with kids. I saw an elderly lady trying to get to her uh, her hotel, and she had an American flag, and they're ripping it out of her hands and getting up in her face and flipping her off. These people are thugs, and they need to be denounced, and there need to be more police out in D.C. protecting people who want to eat in restaurants and stay in hotels and come and enjoy D.C., whether they're for a protest or not. I have to say, the last time I was in D.C., I was getting ready to go for a run, and I was afraid. To, I, I grabbed a T-shirt out of my drawer, and I was afraid to put it on because it had an American flag on it. Just a simple American flag, but I was afraid to wear it in D.C. today. Incredible. You know, Senator, um, I